Hello and welcome to HTL. Today I'm going to be talking about the functions that each instrument track has in common. That's these four tabs along the top. I have open an example uh, of a track that I've finished recently that uses a lot of functions in these tracks and so I'll be using that as an example. If you open up any normal instrument plugin on LMS, you have these five tabs across the top. The plugin tab refers to the controls of the actual instrument plugin, for example, triple oscillator has all of these controls for the three oscillators. Um, and if I open up an audio file processor track, then it contains all of the controls for editing samples. But each of these tracks has in common these four tabs at the top envelope slash LFO, function, FX and MIDI. You'll use these for different things. Envelope slash LFO is probably the most useful. Under L envelopes and LFO you have these three tabs volume, cutoff and reso and they all look similar. On each of these tabs you have all of these controls for the envelope and all of these controls for the LFO. I'm going to start off by talking about volume but these knobs refer to the same sort of aspect. Delay is the amount of time in between the note being sounded and the note actually producing sound in terms of volume. So if I were to increase the pre-delay, I press the note and there's a short amount of time in between that and when the note actually sounds, as you can see. I don't find it very useful, but attack is very useful. It's similar to pre-delay, but when you increase it, it, in, it changes the amount of time in between the note starting and the note reaching the peak. So if I put a lot of attack on this, you see that it starts at zero and it ends at full volume. If I p increase it, it takes longer. And if I decrease it, it's shorter. This can be useful at very, very small values to round off very sharp noises that you don't want to be as abrupt. The hold refers to the amount of time that the instrument stays at full volume before decaying. So if you have the hold very long, it, the note stays on for long before fading off. And if it's very short, then the note will not last very long. Let's lead on to decay. Decay is the amount of time it takes for the sound to get back down to zero again, or the amount that you set the sustain to. So if I have the D decay very short, it takes not very long to fade out. If I have it quite long, it takes a long time to fade away. You can change this with sustain. Sustain is the value at which the note stops descending, decaying. So um, if I put the, the sustain all the way down, then it will decay right down to the value of zero in terms of the volume. If I put it up, then it will only decrease in volume down to here, but then stay. As you can see. Obviously if, there, if it's at full, then it doesn't decay at all. And if it's at zero, it decays fully. Finally, the release is the amount of time that the note sounds for after the note has been sounded. 
So if I let go. The amount of time afterwards is caused by the release. So you can hear the note sounding afterwards. These can be very useful, but you just have to experiment with what works for you. With cutoff, it's very similar. Um, it affects the filter down here. Uh, you can choose the filter by clicking on the drop down menu or just clicking on the effect to go through them. I'm using a low pass filter for this one. The cutoff affects how effective the effect is. <laughs> um, so if there's a pre delay, it's the amount of time it before the effect works. As you can see. The attack is how long it takes for the effect to be fully active. Um, the hold is how long the effect is active for. And obviously the decay and sustain and release work in the same way in the the decay is the amount of time it takes for the effect to fade back down to zero or the whatever value that you set the sustain to. The LFO is similar to the envelope but it makes it oscillate rather than go up and go down again. So you can change the different wave down here. Usually it's just better to keep it at the sine wave. The pre-delay refers to the amount of time it takes before the LFO starts. This can be good if you want it to slowly uh, go into wobbling. Uh, the attack is similar to that, but it's the amount of time it takes for it to be fully active again. If I set it to an increased speed, by clicking on tempo sync um, I can set it to certain notes it obviously changes the visu visual but it also sets it to the tempo at 16th note if you right click and set it to 16th so this is what it sounds like if I change the attack down you can fully hear it So just experiment with that again. For cutoff it's exactly the same. But it just affects the filter rather than the volume. I'm not exactly sure what Rezo does. You'll have to experiment with that for yourself. But it's obviously quite similar again. Onto the functions tab. There are two functions. That is stacking and arpeggio. For stacking you can set it to be a certain chord when a single note is sounded um, or you can set it to be octave. The range refers to the amount of octaves that it goes up. So if I set it to five octaves you can see on the piano at the bottom that five octaves have been sounded along here. This can be useful if you can't be bothered to copy and paste up to up in the piano roll um, or it can be useful to see if doing that would be useful. Arpeggio makes a descending or an, as or an ascending sequence. You can set it to go up, down, up and down, random or down and up. So obviously this is only one octave so it only goes on the single note. You can set the time to a certain tempo. If I set it to four octaves. No, sorry, that's stacking. If I set it to four octaves.
and you can see it goes up on that note in a different octave up. If I set it to up and down, if I set it to down and up, and if I set it to random, too random for me. <laughs> Anyway, but I'm not exactly sure on those those two functions. You'll have to sort that out for yourself as well. Uh, onto effects. Basically, it's exactly the same as the effects chain, the effects mixer. Um, you click, type in any effect of all of these, and then choose it. This can be useful to edit individual things that are in the same FX channel. Uh, onto MIDI. To enable a MIDI input, you just click that, click on here, and your MIDI devices will come up there. I don't ha currently have any attached, I don't think. And then changing the channel and velocity is easy. You can also enable a MIDI output and the custom velocity for your keyboard or pad or whatever you use. So, I think I've covered just about everything that I can along these four. I hope that I've helped you, and especially the volume and cutoff tabs, I advise that you use them because they're very good. I'm just going to show you a little example of how I've used the envelopes um, functions in this track. You can find a link for this track and the album in the description, and I've used LMMS for all of them. Uh, so as you can see here, in this track here, uh, the sub bass accompaniment, I've attached the cutoff attack to an automation track down here. As you can see it's set to zero down here, and then further along it's set to 0 0.149, and this affects it quite a lot. So if I solo the track because my computer doesn't handle playing the whole track while recording, I'll show you here. Um, So there you go. There'll be the song playing at the end, but that is all. Uh, I hope that you have found some help in this video, and please comment on how I can make these videos better. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll do many more, because I'm thinking of moving away from LMS soon. But please give me any suggestions for what you want to know. See you in the next video.